As game worlds get larger and more open, developers have had to come up with ways to let players get around them quickly without all the tedious drudgery of having to travel there in real time. Popular methods include trains, taxi cabs, and of course, trusting your life to a horse with the pathfinding ability of a busted Roomba. Some developers, however, go the extra mile and give us fast travel systems that not only get us where we need to go, but do it in a way that is cool, stylish, or even more likely, downright bizarre. Here are seven of our favourites. Enjoy and beware spoilers ahead for the following games. remember Sunset Overdrive, it was the Xbox exclusive from Spider-Man developer Insomniac Games in which you played a wisecracking kid who parkours around a city, only here's the twist, you're unlikable and don't have spider powers. It's a bold move, let's see if it pays off for them. You want me to be your life coach? Yes. What should I do first, coach? Step one, never call me coach again. Shame. Still, that's not to say there weren't weird things to like in Sunset Overdrive, and thankfully for the purposes of this list, one of them included the fast travel system. Sunset Overdrive is set in Sunset City, a formerly nice place now overrun with former citizens who have been transformed into feral zombies by a bad batch of energy drink. Somehow your character, despite their demeanour and whole deal, didn't drink any energy drink and so remained unzombified and free to parkour, grind and wisecrack their way around the city, smashing up people who were their neighbours right up until they picked the wrong can at a soda machine last week. Not bad, kid. All that rail grinding can get tiring though, so if you'd prefer you can instead use the little orange fast forward symbols on the map to travel to where you want to be. Instead of just teleporting you to your desired location though, Sunset Overdrive gives you an in-universe explanation as to why you were in one place and then suddenly somewhere else, which is, you got blackout drunk. After downing a bottle of booze, you'll be treated to a loading screen and then your beloved character will stagger, reeking, out of a portable toilet in a different part of town, presumably after having wandered there in a daze to spend several hours sleeping it off in a pool of their own vomit. Let me just check if this is the fast travel system in Spider-Man as well. Huh, no, adorable subway cutscenes. Interesting. The map has been updated. Yeah. <laughs> Because Hideo Kojima spent seven years and all of Konami's money making it, Metal Gear Solid V is one of the most incredibly detailed games ever made. This is most noticeable in its vast array of overlapping systems that canny players can exploit to do things like beat a tough boss by dropping crates on their head. Look out, boss. Take cover. There's a laser sight trained on your head. Another thing that might have escaped your notice on account of how you have a cool dog and a rocket arm is the fact that Metal Gear Solid V has a fast travel system that the game absolutely doesn't tell you about. Please select a landing support helicopter Roger. requested. Yes, you can call in Pequod, your transport helicopter, to move you around different landing zones on the map, but that takes time. If you want to travel instantly between enemy bases, you're going to want to harness the awesome power of the Postal Service. As is series tradition, Metal Gear Solid V allows you to disguise yourself by climbing inside a cardboard box, something you'd think the world's various militias and PMCs would be wise to by now. And yet. Dotted around the game's outposts and enemy bases are these orange platforms, which are actually delivery zones. If you remove the paper invoice from these locations, you unlock them as fast travel locations and can instantly travel between them by climbing into your cardboard box, shuffling onto the platform, and then waiting for a truck to come and pick you up and mail you to your destination. Please select a delivery point. The map has been updated. 
Clearly, Snake thinks this is such a good idea that this also works on Mother Base, where you can mail yourself to the different platforms to avoid having to walk there. Please select a delivery point. hundred percent guaranteed the soldiers driving you over know exactly what's going on, but what are they gonna do? Complain? If you're putting up with the codename Rancid Sloth, you're putting up with this. Thank you, boss. What is that thing? <laughs> the night's suppressed. I should call. On second thought, she listens to their transmissions. Better find out on her own. The magical gang of intergalactic space wizards known as the Jedi have lots of incredible skills at their disposal, including double jumping, force push, and of course, twirling a lightsaber around without cutting off their own head and limbs. One thing they can't do, however, is teleport, which is a shame because Jedi Fallen Order is a game based around the Dark Souls style of gameplay, which is shorthand for you die a lot. <laughs> which is itself shorthand for lots of tedious backtracking. It's not all bad news, however. There are a couple of times that Jedi Fallen Order allows you to fast travel instead of having to do a ton of backtracking. And our favourite is the one involving the Shio Bird, that's spelt with three Ys, on the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk, also with three Ys, because Kashyyyk's most abundant natural resource is apparently the letter Y. My friend. As Tarful let us hear, he spoke of a glorious creature called the Shio Bird. For space wizard reasons we don't have time to get into here, your character, lapsed Jedi Cal Kestis, has to climb a, uh, hang on, I've got Wikipedia open, Roshir, a sacred Wookiee tree that is as tall and massive as it is difficult to pronounce and spell. Anyway, as you climb the tree, laser sorting endless oversized garden pests in half along the way, you'll start to encounter the Shio bird, who menaces you for the rest of the climb, and then has the nerve to expect you to help it instead of laser sorting it in half. Hey, it's okay. We're not here to hurt you. Still, once you have helped it, it gives you a lift to the top of the tree, where you have a rock hard boss battle, because Dark Souls, remember? Ah, got the bird and the kid. Most importantly though, once you've finished the boss fight, the Shio bird lets you fast travel back down to the bottom of the tree, meaning you don't have to redo the entire punishing climb in reverse. Glad you're okay. It does unceremoniously dump you in a swamp though, but you can't have everything I guess. Those roots don't look like your magic. They aren't. These roots are part of the Great World Tree and make travel between the realms possible. Kratos from God of War doesn't so much walk as he does angrily stride between violent murders. That being said, we do have Atreus to look after now, so perhaps we should be trying to set a good example. <laughs> Starting now. Luckily, once you get a little further into the game, Kratos is able to stay out of potentially violent trouble by using mystic gateways to walk the branches of Yggdrasil, the immense world tree that connects the nine realms of Norse mythology. And is this the world tree? Only an artistic representation of it. No, the Yggdrasil is much, much more than this. That's right, it is much, much more in that it's God of War's fast travel system. In Norse mythology, Yggdrasil is the centre of the cosmos and each of the nine realms that make up the world exist along its branches. What this means for the extremely literal-minded Kratos is that he can pop into the world tree, walk along its branches, and then pop back out again when he reaches the branch that corresponds with his destination. It's not instant fast travel as you have to take Kratos' journey along the world tree in real time, but you do get to enjoy some gruff dialogue between Kratos and Atreus that isn't just him shouting the word boy. Boy! Usually isn't. It's also not 100% foolproof in that you can decide to jump off, which I swear we only did once in the spirit of scientific discovery to find out if it was a good idea or a bad idea. Bad idea! See? Now we know.
Secret of Mana is a 1993 action RPG for the Super Nintendo that featured great music, graphics that were excellent for the time, a new real-time combat system, and of course, an expansive open world for you to run around in hitting bees. Thanks to the expansiveness of that open world, however, the game needed a fast travel system to let you travel to new areas and to cut down on long and tedious backtracking, especially when there were bees every 10 feet, spoiling for a fight. So what's the best way to travel quickly across a big fantasy world, the developers asked themselves, to which their only logical answer was, of course, getting shot out of a giant cannon. Find a cannon travel centre on your journey and for the bargain price of 50 gold pieces per trip, you can climb into this unlicensed guy's huge ornate cannon and he will blast you vaguely in the direction of where you're trying to go. Yeah, just slide into the cannon, try not to get exploded, and I guess roll when you land? Once the cannon fires, you're treated to a cutscene of your characters getting blasted impossibly high in the sky, spinning wildly, and with absolutely no control over their landing. The party then smashes into the ground at terminal velocity and instead of exploding into a shower of gore and wrongful death suits, gets straight back up and starts adventuring again. Oh hey, and we landed on a bee! That'll save some time. Been a while, Sam. It's good to see you. Remember how to do this? You need to close your eyes and picture your destination. Death Stranding is a game that is primarily about walking from place to place while carrying inadvisable quantities of cargo that you're trying desperately not to drop. What Death Stranding also is, however, is long, and after a while the appeal of trudging your way across the entire map to pick up the next story mission starts to become as appealing as, well, as listening to your baby jar go ballistic for the fifth time this half hour. Thankfully, from Chapter 3 onwards, you're able to use a fast travel system known as the Fragile Jump System, named after the character Fragile, played by Leia Seydoux. Fragile is apparently Hideo Kojima's homage to Mary Poppins, which you can tell by her can-do attitude and terrifying techno umbrella. Pretty sure Mary Poppins' jacket didn't do this, however. Fragile is what is known as a jumper, someone with teleportation abilities, and she's willing to loan them to you to decrease the amount of time you have to spend sliding down a wet hillside while being yelled at by an infant. Also, I think the umbrella is involved in some way, as it points in the direction of your destination. I don't know, the process is kind of vague and confusing. In a Hideo Kojima game, I know. The process does apparently take a toll of some sort on Fragile, however, so you'd better only use it for really important trips. Again? I'm not a machine, you know. Yes, but I just remembered I hate walking. You understand, right? Darkness falls, as the humans beg their king to save them. A noble king known only as the Grand Wizard. For a thousand years the battle has been waged, with only the bravery of the Grand Wizard to protect his human followers. But even though the Wizard King is so undeniably cool, the Drow Elf armies continue their attack. They seek the human's most treasured relic, the Stick of Truth. South Park The Stick of Truth took the long-running animated show and mashed it together with Lord of the Rings style fantasy, creating an RPG full of mythical enemies, magical items and farts. In it, you play as the prophesied new kid who is going to unite the forces of good and reclaim the mystical stick of truth, while the rest of the cast take on roles as fantasy wizards, rogues and bards, with varying degrees of success. Here you can see our massive stables, overseen by the level 9 ranger, Scott Malkinson, who has the power of diabetes. South Park is a big town, however, and you're a small kid, and also walk like you're a crudely animated construction paper cutout, which is where the game's fast travel system comes in. In keeping with the rest of the cast, fan favourite character Timmy has also adopted a new fantasy persona, that of Sir Timmy, owner and proprietor of Sir Timmy's Fast Travel. <laughs> As you journey around South Park, you discover and unlock fast travel flags, which you can travel between with the help of Sir Timmy, and what sounds like an undeniably impressive trusty steed. Timmy! But turns out to be an admittedly adorable stuffed toy. Still, you can't argue with the results. Hello, Timmy. 
In the superhero-themed sequel, The Fractured But Whole, fast travel duties are now handled by Jimmy, in the guise of his superhero alter ego, Fast Pass, who uses his super speed to dash you to where you need to go in record time. See you, new kid. A superpower both better and more socially acceptable than my superpower. Thanks so much for watching this video about the weirdest fast travel systems that still be walking. If you want to watch another YouTube video, we've got a fast travel system for you right now. You can click on the video here that's on screen right now for another video from Outside Xbox, or if you want to fast travel over to an Outside Extra video, then why not click on the video underneath it? And you can check out what those guys have been up to over there. Something fun, I'll bet. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.